right direction Cause we got a long way to go People win sometimes we find ourselves two steps ahead Gotta keep moving Cause we got a long way to go Cause we got a long way to go Cause we got a long way to go Why? Why the war? What's it for? Has it ever done anyone good? How many people will vote and stop it if they could? So even if it's just a little bit, by step by step and on, gotta keep moving in the right direction, cause we got a long way to go. But when sometimes we find ourselves two steps ahead, gotta keep moving. This is the Localize This Action Camp. Sure. Backbone Campaign's mission is to provide creative tools to the progressive movement. Uh, this, uh, this at this point seems to include um, helping folks not just have access to puppets and awards and things like that, but also to expand our imagination and our skills in the variety of tools we use to, uh, to move our movements forward. My name is Amy Morrison and I'm the Managing Director of the Backbone Campaign. And we started thinking about doing an action camp back when we were at the DNC and the RNC and we saw that there were so many youth that were starting to get really involved in um, more effective activism. So we decided to offer a, a camp in Arts for Social Change and direct action. And then with the support of our board, in January we decided to move forward with the process and we started organizing meetings and we asked our board member John Sellers, who's also on the board of the Ruckus Society, if he would invite the Ruckus Society to co-sponsor the camp and they said that they would. For the last six years we've been focused principally on national issues. We were getting ready to plan a uh, tour around the country. We we're actually in the middle of planning a tour around the country when an issue broke and needed a, a, a grassroots uh, res creative response on our own in our own community on Vashon Island. And so uh, we helped folks organize and help uh, them think about <clears throat> how to use uh, imagery, how to uh, work the media, etc in order to mobilize our community uh, against the expansion of an industrial gravel mine that threatens our neighboring island, Maury Island. Uh, this has been an incredible challenge and opportunity for the Backbone Campaign because it's allowed us to go from being on the fringes of strategy, strategy and uh, planning to being centrally involved in, uh, in the sculpting of a campaign. And that's been very, very exciting for us. We've learned a lot. We're continuing to learn a lot, and we uh, this camp is a, a sign of this camp is really where we've called on other experts from around the country to come in and uh, and help us as well as other activists uh, get the skills that we need and they need to succeed in our local campaigns, and that's why it's called localize this because we wanted to we wanted to fight the fights in the terrain that we're familiar with, that we're connected with the people in our own communities where we possibly have a better chance of succeeding. My name is Sharon, I'm the program director for the RECA Society. Um, the RECA Society has been in existence for 13 years now and we are a direct action training and support network. And what that means is we train activists to be ready for direct action with various skills that include blockades and climbing, which are two of the skills we're offering here at this camp, um, but it also means that we partner with communities who are in struggle and who are ready to take action. We support them um, through training and also action support. 
Um, so we do things like host training camps like this or partner with communities to do training camps where activists can come and get trained. Um, and we'll also come out to your community or to your school and offer trainings to you there. And we got a call from John Sellers and Backbone asking us to consider sending some direct action trainers here to this camp, informing us about the issues here on this community and the way the community was already resisting and fighting back. Uh, and so they asked us to come and send some trainers out and we saw this as a really great opportunity to open up a training space to a wider community so not just here in the Pacific Northwest but to open it up to some of the indigenous networks that we work with and also open it up to various other communities that we worked with so we decided to dive right in and you know both accomplish the goal of supporting this community to be action ready but also give folks in other communities who are struggling an opportunity to come and get trained and support themselves at home. And this camp here is called Localize This. And so we're asking everybody who's here to think about how are you going to localize this? How do you take the trainings and the skills that you're acquiring here and localize it back to your own community? And what does it mean to to bring this back and take action wherever you're from? And we did a lot of outreach to different communities, went to different college campuses. On the Backbone campaign tour that we did around the country, we were telling people always about the Action Camp and inviting them to come back to Vashon and learn more skills. And then the camp just came together. Um, we got word that Doug Dolstead allowed us to have the camp on his land. And so we were able to do the camp with a not very much money. So it didn't take us a whole lot to put the camp together. Um, and people just started signing up. It was a trickle, but eventually we got about 60 people on the land to participate. Tactics for Land and Sea was the subtitle of the Localize This Camp. Those creative tactics span the arts for social change from silk screening to uh, sign building to giant puppets to drumming and instrument building. Another uh, aspect is our direct action track where folks are learning skills from rappelling to road blockades. Uh, the, the, and the third track is our kayak component, our mosquito fleet. Uh, hitting the water safely and effectively is very important to us on the island and in Puget Sound. And there are lots of places around the country and around the world, of course, where uh, we're, have, we're using, but we're direct action, not principled nonviolent direct action uh, on the water is also a potential uh, tool. For the last eight years, a lot of people have become complacent or used, used to being, doing able, being able to do their activism from the, key, the keyboard, keyboard of their computer. And so the Localize This Action Camp is providing a whole spectrum of tools that expand beyond mouse click activism. In addition to all of the amazing folks who live on this island and who are participating in this camp, we've brought people in from communities in Alaska, in northern Washington, in Canada, from the tar sands communities and communities that are being affected by the development there, um, uh, indigenous folks from Vancouver, um, as well as the Southwest in Colorado and New Mexico. My name is Kate Berrigan. I'm a volunteer trainer with the Ruckus Society and I'm here on Bastion Island. We're doing a camp with the Backbone Campaign and the Mosquito Fleet and uh, I am doing some climb training this week for direct action climbing and I finished up a blockades training just now uh, in this desert storm tent behind me. What are strategic places or locations or you know areas uh, strategic points where you might want to block it. Okay. Yeah. Logging roads. Okay, good. You don't have to raise your hand, just call stuff out. Entrances and exits. Entrances and exits. Gates. Major corporation. Major corporation. Okay. Bridges. Narrow points. Good. Airs airstrips, airfields. Okay. A blockade is uh, just an obstruction. Um, anything that you want to stop from happening, whether that's cars driving down the street or uh, a logging truck getting to uh, getting to the area to be logged or a ship going into port or out of port, 
anything can be blockaded. So I believe that uh, if one notices injustice, uh, one has a responsibility as a citizen of the world, right, a citizen of a country, a citizen of a community, um, to address that injustice in any way that we can. And Ruckus Society uh, is founded on that principle. Here at the Localize This Action uh, training camp, we have several arti artistic activities going on including um, the uh, children's activities or children's summer camp program where the kids have made um, orca horns, which you may hear in the background, and uh, mosquito buzzer things that they swing around and mosquito masks. Um, they're um, vamping on the mosquito fleet idea um, and uh, creating all these mosquito images. The orca horns are for um, accompanying a giant full-scale orca puppet that we're building, which is essentially the um, central project for the um, arts and social chains tract um, going on um, throughout the week. Um, people are getting an opportunity to kind of see how to make a spectacle scale image um, for uh, movement building in their own communities and such, and at the same time helping um, the Backbone campaign build a provocative, beautiful parade image that can help them in their campaign um, to stop the uh, gravel mine in the area here. Bill Moyer is, you know, for the track in the afternoons, um, Bill Moyer is, uh, we're collaborating to present um, not just the build of the Orca puppet, which is a big task for the week, but also teaching um, uh, protest rally drumming, you know, and parade art drumming. Um, he's doing some silk screening with some of the participants to make homemade t-shirts um, that have a message or kind of um, creating imagery that encapsulates uh, um, um, movement um, ideas and um, um, goals and such. Um, also working with a few of the participants to um, um, train in the use of large banners um, that could be laid out on the landscape or dropped you know, from structures and such. Um, in the morning, um, we have Dana and Aaron, principally, but also some uh, great parent volunteers. But I'm collaborating with Dana and Aaron um, to do you know, various activities through the morning for the kids camp. Um, I mentioned the mosquito mass and the orca horns, and now the kids are getting a little experience at doing some silk screening, silk screening t-shirts, um, so they can learn how to make their own t-shirts. Um, and we're gonna have probably a few more, uh, you know, we still have uh, quite a bit to do on the mosquito mass, like painting the eyes and um, attaching the wings and that kind of thing. So that's pretty much gonna keep us busy for the next couple days. And then I'll put paper mache on my hat and everything like that so so I can paint it and it will be like skin and some people might think I'm a real mosquito. If kids are running around playing they feel safe going any anywhere on this property right um, everybody has a voice everybody has something to contribute and you know in a lot of ways we're all equal here um, in ways that maybe we're not outside uh, outside of this space in, in society you know people are ranked based on um, based on class and uh, professional training or education, um, people are ranked based on where they live and what they look like and who they associate with. There's all kinds of hierarchies that we're trying to break down. Here we have the uh, whale skeleton behind me that we've been working on. Um, it's made principally out of split bamboo. When I first came to the camp, I couldn't help but notice these gorgeous structures that um, the camp uh, tech people set up. You know, they were here for about probably a week prior to the opening of camp, setting up these magnificent bamboo um, tent structures. Um, but anyway, as we were seeking uh, materials that would be appropriate for making a whale skeleton, um, I did uh, um, have um, the fortune of having a bunch of leftover bamboo from the setup, uh, you know, especially bamboo that isn't, doesn't have any more like uh, rigid kind of pole integrity, but bamboo that was cracked and such, so we split the bamboo open um, and created these hoops and then linked the hoops together on a spine made out of willow branches, which uh, cut uh, in the woods um, right behind Bill Moyer's property actually and um, used rubber inner tubes, bicycle inner tubes for lashing the framework together. 
Uh, we've got some bamboo that was harvested um, by Nan and, uh, uh, and a few others, some volunteers that have been very helpful um, in their yards, you know, cutting uh, the bamboo for the cross bracing. And um, we'll, we have the task ahead of us today of, of creating the fins, the dorsal fin and the side fins and the tail. Um, that will be done out of foam rubber with a wire support inside of it. And, um, and then putting the skin on. So uh, we've got a lot of work to do before this whale swims. I'm going down this road with a man. This has to be an end. That's just after another man. Walk around with a slapper. Don't know what the time is. I don't want to know that. Standing oh next to a good, good friend. There's no pretending when you've got true friends. I've been thinking about these lessons, trying to ask questions, try to find the best way to come and find it. On this road seems good, right now seems right like now, it right? should be this. Cause breathing here in this rich chain, it's not beyond conflict, no more desire. But with our feet, kill no us. Even though sometimes they might get tired, with our fists up and our hearts to guide us. I'm Simran McKenna. I've been working as a climb trainer here at the Backbone Campaign and Ruckus Society Camp on Bashan Island. And we've been working to develop a bunch of skills amongst some of the activists here that are needed for some of the more technical direct actions that, uh, that people will take, take part in. And so the skills that we're developing are you know, everything from climbing ropes, safety, abseiling, rappelling. Uh, and really everything that you need to create one of these more technical banner hangs or blockades, occupations, something like that. Uh, and it's been, it's been a great success. We've had, so we've had some great activists out. This is the slow but safe way of getting up the tree. <laughs> there are many ways of using this skill. Um, I don't, I don't really have any uh, direct plans on using this in the near future. Um, I would like to do a tree sit in my lifetime, if not several. So what we're going to work on today is to make sure that everyone who wants to flip over gets a chance to. Um, we're going to go out, paddle around the point, um, get into some warmer water in Fern Cove, um, and then uh, do a as many rescues as folks want. And then I'm going to turn it over to the Admiral of the Fleet, that being Alethea, and we're going to do some games, some formation. This is an essential piece of gear. Um, there are situations where you can't get folks back into their boat. Many of the boats that we're going to be paddling in today are what are called recreational boats. They're not seagoing kayaks. They don't have enough flotation to float the amount of water that they will fill with in addition to your body weight is braces. Um, I demonstrated this a little bit yesterday, um, but you're going to get a chance to practice them today. Um, and we have a limited number of spray skirts, so we're just going to be kind of trading the skirts around between boats. Um, if you feel like kayaking or uh, capsizing a kiwi, um, feel free to do so. It's going to mean probably a ride to shore. Uh, and particularly when you're in a short boat, they don't want to go all the way over. You might find yourself in a fairly uncomfortable position where your head is kind of bobbing out here and you're kind of stuck in the boat. Still, if you can, do the three taps. Um, it's nice to know that you can hold your breath for longer than you think, 
even when all is disoriented and you don't know which way is up. So the whole challenge to a paddle float rescue is maintaining this paddle perpendicular to your boat. So I'm gonna grab the cockpit. I got some good grips here. And I've got this hooked on my toe to hold it out. So then I go, oh, 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 ah, oh, ah, yeah. and I get up here, and at this point, I'm leaning back onto this. Since I don't have another boat here, it's really easy to overbalance and just roll your boat again, and then you're in the water on the other side, and your paddle's floating away because it now has a float attached to it. So I'm hanging on to all this stuff, and this is a very stable position. The hard part of a paddle float rescue is this one right here. And it's you get your knee over the shaft of your paddle, pass your other leg over it, and then get this leg into the cockpit as you're holding that float perpendicular and leaning towards the paddle float. <laughs> Then I'm going to put a hand on the paddle. You're doing yoga, Nick. Is there a hole in my pants? Um, and, I'm, and I'm leaning towards this all the time. Um, I've seen it happen quite a few times where folks will get to this point, and then they'll go like this, and that paddle float just comes right off, and they're in the water on the other side of their boat. Um, so you got your hand out here, and you're leaning out onto here. You get both legs in the boat, which on this one is difficult. You lean out onto that float, you got a tremendous amount of buoyancy out there, and then you're back in your boat. My name's Annie Brule. I grew up here on Vashon Island, and I'm a kayak instructor here at the Backbone and Ruckus Society's localized this action camp. Um, it's been a pretty amazing week so far. We've had some kayak trainings all the way from very beginning through intermediate to advanced today. and. Um, <laughs> have gotten folks on the water in preparation for actions uh, against Glacier Northwest, who's attempting to access their rights to uh, gravel mine out on Maury Island here that's attached to Vashon. Uh, and it's directly over a marine preserve. Uh, so they need permits from the state to, uh, to lease the right to operate in the marine preserve. And uh, many islanders, myself included, oppose that, uh, that whole idea and have taken action starting this January on the water uh, against Glacier, uh, attempting to delay work uh, and also make a statement um, and gain some media attention. And so far we've been successful. Um, unfortunately, we weren't all completely trained when we went out in January. It all went smoothly, but um, this camp is an attempt to get people ready and really safe out on the water because if we're going to resist, we've got to be doing it in a safe and organized way. Today is Friday. It's basically the final day of camp. We know that it's important to take the skills that we've been working on and apply them, give them a context. Certainly all these folks will have an opportunity to do that in their communities, but we thought it would be important to have a, a safe place to attempt to integrate the various tactics into an, a nonviolent direct action. And so today we'll be doing a role play. The, uh, the campers have been given a scenario and a barge is coming to this island and they have to find a way to stop that barge from constructing a dock. Uh, it's uh, very similar to the situation we face on our island, but here uh, folks have an opportunity, whether they're climbers or whether they've been on the water most of the week or whether they're artists or, <clears throat> or whatever, or whether they've been interested in camping strategy, media, etc to integrate those skills and to work together to collaborate on a sh in, a, in a very short amount of time to come up with an effective plan of action. So I'll bet if all got spent, they shake each other's hands and laugh, then they set up down the same road. The only leads to someplace warm. They think about how far we've drifted, but know that that comes well by in town when someone said in your own words. Cause think about how many times those words got passed through France from hand to hand across the land to hand and back again. Just like the truth, when it's not put to good use, no. We're going blind and I can't hear what you just said. Comes regardless of our actions, our busy practice, and time that leads the way. Is it each man for himself or helping someone else in need that takes away our pain? So even if it's just a little bit, by step by step and on, gotta keep moving in the right direction, cause we got a long way to go. But when sometimes we find ourselves two steps ahead,
definitely been seeing a buildup of excitement from folks as they've walked this direct action pathway with us. And the way we like to set up these camps is we like to, um, we talk about action as strategic escalation, as like taking the next step. And that's kind of how our camps work, is we start you off on one level and then every day you kind of take the next step and kind of build your skills a little bit. And uh, it's gotten me really excited to see the excitement on people's faces and to hear side conversations that are happening from folks about the kinds of actions that might be possible in their communities. Um, I think we're definitely achieving the goal of making this community here a little bit more ready for what's going to be coming up here this summer um, and getting folks a little bit more grounded into direct action skills, feeling a little more prepped, a little more grounded in strategy around nonviolence and how to choose tactics and just a little bit better informed around what are some good ways to do action that are safe, that are supportive of the community, that take direction from people that are impacted. Uh, and I've just been hearing a lot of buzz and really great conversations from the participants about how this is all going to go home with folks. And so I'm feeling really excited and inspired and, and ready to see some really amazing action and some good wins in our communities. What if we could just extend some love that we feel for our friends across an ocean and horizon? Maybe there will be an end to the violence and some bloodshed that stains the world red. Stains it red. Stains it red. Even if it's just a little bit by step by step and on.